We've reached chapter three, and this is where we're going to stop. Cause it just turned midnight over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not going to stream tomorrow. With the Imperial Army came chaos for its enemies as they swept through Kyo and swiftly proceeded east through the Koshu Kaido. The Shinsengumi rebranded itself as the Koyo Regulatory Company, enticed by glory from their former employer, employer to subdue their, their Imperial force foes. Blech. The outcome of the battle in Kofu, however, left the Shinsengumi with neither a castle nor an army to fill it, and they licked the wounds of their defeated in, this in disgrace. The window of time in which our men had put up a capable fight was fleeting, and soon Imperial forces pushed us into an embarrassing retreat. During the retreat, Yamazaki-san and I were separated from the rest of the troop, dragging our exhausted bodies back to Edo, hoping for a spot of good news. Our return trip took several days, and by the end of it, my feet were aching and haggard. あれだけ研究されていたにもかかわらず、大きな目と逃げ帰るなど、頭を上げろ、先。敗戦の責任を問うなら、もちろん俺の方だ。わざわざ増援を頼みに来たってのに、何一つ動かすことすらできなかったん
Having such a powerful figure as an ally would surely bolster the Shinsengumi's morale. さて、どうしたもんか。出立前に敵方の羅刹隊に対処しておきたいのは山々だな。現在の情報では動くに動けません。まずはどこに身を隠しているのかわからないことよ。それなら情報収集を俺と雪村君に任せてください。Yamazaki-san's suggestion was immediately met with a dubious expression from Saito, whose eyes thinned. Masaka, anta tachi dake de taisho shiyo to yu no dewa nai daro na. Ikura sonomi ga rasetsu ni natta to wa iye, kashin wa kinmotsu da. Wakatte imasu. Sono kashin wa... ...senjitsu heshi orare da bakari desu. Yamazaki-san snapped at Saito, biting his lip derisively. Let's not fight from the front. First, we have to find the enemy of the Shin Seifu Gun. We have to find the enemy of the Shin Seifu Gun. If we have to go to Edo, we have to find the Shin Seifu Gun. Yeah, we have to find the Shin Seifu Gun. Same here. I want to go along with Yamazaki-san. Even if he's wearing a disguise, I think I'll be able to pick him out of a group instantly. Ichigata-san stroked his chin in contemplation, as the rest of us traded our arguments vehemently. After a while, he heaved a large sigh. Days had passed as Hijikata-san assigned everyone to their next order of business. As directed, the Shinsengumi departed Edo in a convoy for Aizu, Aizu recruiting every able-bodied warrior to join in the growing resistance effort. Unfortunately, not everyone in the Shinsengumi was pleased with Hijikata-san's decision. Nagakura and Harada, who had previously voiced their discontent with Kondo-san, publicly announced their decision to leave the Shinsengumi. Yamazaki-san and I had other plans, remaining in Edo to locate any hint of where father could be. The afternoon sunset dyed the sky red, lurking above the horizon like an ominous premonition. We walked as a pair through Edo underneath the soft glow of the dying sunlight. How are you feeling, Yamazaki-san? Do you think it would have been better if we waited until sundown? Yeah, it's fine. When it comes to this time, it's going to be a lot of time. As we exchanged pleasant dreams, I noticed people of all walks of life flitting by us hurriedly. Word of the Shogunate's failed campaign spread. So too did news of the Imperial Army's march to Edo. Three hundred years of peace under the Tokugawa's regime were about to come crashing down, and Edo was at the center of the collapse. I used to drop in the conversations nearby, hearing everyone murmur nervously to one another. What are you doing? Uh, I was wondering to myself what my life would have been like if I had never met the Shinsengumi. If, on that fateful night, I had never bumped into the bloodthirsty creature, things would have unfolded differently. I would have hung my head low, returning to Edo as a downtrodden wreck. The hideous truth of father's work would have eluded me, and my days would be wasted in waiting for him. But if none of this ever happened, then I wouldn't have met you, Yamazaki-san. So I don't regret a single thing. I'm more than elated with the choices that I have made. Haha! <laughs> I love this spread, Yamazaki! 
その以前も言わせてもらったがもう一度言わせてくれないかうん君は卑怯だ突然俺の心を奪わないでくれ<笑>はあなん何でもないそれより話を戻そう<laughs> After his little outburst, Yamazaki san cleared his throat, assuming a stern tone that I could tell was forced. Since I've been going to eat a little bit, I'm going to eat a little bit. 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 You want to investigate the house I used to live in? So, that's it. 以前東堂さんたちが軽く調べてくれたとは聞いているが何か見落としがあったかもしれないうまくいけば行動さんの行方についても何らかの手がかりか山崎さん cut himself, himself short suddenly I heard his footsteps come to a halt 山崎さん out of curiosity I turned my head to get a peek <笑> Yamazaki san clutched his hand over his chest, grunting loudly as his eyes began bulging from their sockets. <sighs> oh no! There was no mistaking it. He was experiencing a bout of bloodlust. Worst of all, it was occurring in the middle of a crowded public street with passbys on all sides. I hastily threw my armor on Yamazaki san's shoulders, whose teeth were clamped over his tongue as he kept himself from crying aloud in agony. Yamazaki san, this way! Hmm. It was imperative that he remained out of sight. The two of us bolted into a dim, narrow alley, out of sight and away from sunlight. I kept my back facing the main road, and I wiped the beads of cold sweat dripping from Yamazaki san's forehead. Yamazaki san. I'm here for you. Don't worry, I'll. Stay with me now for round three. Giving him blood! I'll let you drink some of my blood. My eyes darted around us, and after ensuring that we were safe, I unsheathed my Kodachi and ran the edge of my blade against the tip of my index finger. He flicked his tongue on my cut, taking soft sifts of my blood as it trickled onto his lips. There was something naughty about how eagerly he sucked my blood, gently nibbling on the fingertip. I couldn't help but think of the townsfolk bouncing to and from the destinations in the background, so I started growing nervous. Yamazaki? I think you need to hurry or someone's going to see us. I relented, feeling the pressure of his lips pinching my finger as it raced up my arm. As he finished, his pale face was beginning to regain color. The side effects of his affliction were taking a larger toll on his body than I could have. <sighs> a larger toll on his body than I could have imagined. Yamazaki's son fell unconscious on my lap, drooping like a dropping like a stone on the f to the floor. I panicked, shifting my eyes. Has anyone seen us? Did anyone hear the howl of his raspy voice? Regardless of either question, it was pertinent that I, that we moved out of sight. I took a deep breath, inhaling as I threw Yamazaki-san's arm over his shoulder and supported his weight. Over my shoulder should have been. His frame may have been smaller than some of the other Shinsengumi men, but dead weight is no joke. I mustered all of my gear, all my grit, considering there was no one around us who could help. The Shinsugumi had migrated north for Aizu. 
But Nagakura and Harada vacated their positions, and Okita was still bedridden, ill with a res respiratory disease. For once, I had only myself to rely upon. I hadn't taken two steps before my body started aching, and just when I thought I would faint... Oi! Bionin ka? I tensed, gradually turning my head over my shoulder. The admirable voice calling out to us belonged to a young man, not too much older than Yamazaki son or myself. A long, frizzled turf tuft of hair covered his head, and he furrowed his brow upon cold, closer inspection. I can't speak today. He was cheerful, and I had an inclination to trust him. It was a peculiar feeling, almost as if he... And it's, uh, almost as if he, we had been previously acquainted despite having... Almost as if we had been previously acquainted despite never having met. However, I shook my head, stopping myself from dwelling too much. Uh, I'm okay, thank you. I can manage just fine on my own. I stepped backwards, making sure to keep Yamazaki-san's face hidden behind me. A look of confusion fell on the young man's face, and he scratched his coarse, m his coarse mess of hair curiously. Ah, oh. On the outside, he looked, he looked totally harmless, but the timing of his offer to help was a tad conspicuous. I eased my back, lowering my shoulder. The young man gasped, widening his eyes when he caught sight of Yamazaki-san's face behind my shoulder. Yamazaki? Oi! Oi! Omae! We have found Ibuki again! <gasps> Somehow, I felt Yamazaki san perk up in response, but without a clear view of his face, it was impossible to know. I was hoping to judge the young man's reaction. Behind me, Yamazaki san sighed. He was cycling through a flurry of emotions, or at least this was the impression I gathered. Once Yamazaki-san began recognizing the man in front of us, I heard his voice quiver as if he were on the verge of tears. なんだよ、お前無事だったのか。新選組が負けて戻ってきたって聞いて、俺はてっきり。な、良かったら俺のところに来いよ。積もる話だってたくさん。いや、悪いな人違いだ。え?な、何言ってんだよ。お前、山崎進むだろ。いつも鹿目面で不器用なぐらいにクソ真面目で、だけど本当は優しくて。ダメ、武器。新選組の観察型で医者の代わりもしてて。違う。俺は優しくなんてないし、もう医者代わりなん
The tile engraving with our family name was fading, and I grazed it with my fingers, tracing the path of the familiar grooves. I've been gone for so long. The house has fallen into a state of disp disrepair. Mm. My father and I lived here together. I recognized the scent in the air, slowly ambling past the entrance gate. Scattered weeds emerged through cracks in the stone, and I rested my hand upon the door. Before I slid open the entrance, I turned around and faced Yamazakasen to ask him something. Was the man who bumped into us earlier an acquaintance of yours? Yamazaki-san barked defensively, but I could tell that he was lying to me. His reasons for hiding it weren't clear to me, so I asked Yamazaki if they were, uh... Friends. If he wasn't an acquaintance, was he your friend? Mm-hmm, sure, Yamazaki. But he knew your name. His face lit up when he recognized you. Besides, your reaction was very strange. Yamazaki-san had normally displayed level-headedness in moments of extreme duress, which made his erratic behavior all the more troubling. When you spoke with Ibuki, I could tell there's something shifted in your speech. Most of all, I'd never seen you get so excited before. It was impossible to miss. そこは仕方ないだろう。あいつにはいろいろと迷惑もかけたし、逆にかけられたりもしたからな。だからまあ、そういう意味では友人と言えるか。all oh, right, friends. At last, Yamazaki-san admitted the truth, letting a small sigh out from under his breath. あいつ、ibuki と俺が出会ったのは君と出会うよりもさらに前。新選組がまだ老子組と呼ばれていた頃。今日の都で新選組の黎明期を共に過ごした。いわば昔の仲間ということになるな。Yamazaki-san gazed longingly at the sky above us, watching the star patterns twinkle brightly. His voice trailed off, causing me to ponder what may have caused a rift between Ibuki and the Shinsengumi. I wondered how he settled all the way here in Edo. Yamazaki-san left it at that, letting out another sigh as his eyes dropped to meet mine. Ibuki and our path was the past of the past. You speak very warmly about him. He must have meant a lot to you. Bukiyonaotokodakarana. He nodded and I returned the favor. Yamazaki-san and I slid open the door, carefully stepping onto the dusty tatami into my childhood home. Memories of the past came flooding back to me. Stools where patients sat, and father's study. My old bedroom, cabinets and closets left ajar. Together we sifted through documents, but nothing useful caught our attention. I found lots of patient records and prescriptions for medical doses, but... Yamazaki-san heaved a lamenting sigh, glancing at me inquisitively as he flipped through a stack of parchment. Tonaruto, Atua Kimino Kyoko Dayorina. 
何か行動さんのことで気になる思い出はないか So, uh, Yamazaki's route is the best, in my opinion, personally, because he is best boy. But he's, he, he manages, his route manages to do something that no other route has managed to、uh, do for me. So, we're gonna witness it. Don't know if it's now or later, but we'll see. Hmm. Well, from time to time, father liked to step out. It was usually to see his patients, though. Other than that, it's all a little fuzzy. All I can remember is that he was a remarkably kind man. My eyes wandered around the room, hoping to find some kind of totem that would help jog my memory. I spent so much time in this house that it saddened me to think about how ethereal all of it was. Ephemeral all of it was. Father always loved treating his patients. Father, why did you want to become a doctor? I don't know what age Yukimura is at right now. Hmm? Ha 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 ha. Oh my, I'm not sure what you're doing. Okay, this is her when it's younger, okay. Lampo in Natanoa. So they could off Kaidi Yugata Vakido and I. Tada, Sugreta Seo Yako, Manabita Kata Dakesa. Dana Saikiwa Yakso Yomeba Yomuhodo, Seo to Kodokuni no Sao Jikan Sasirare Portonar, Moranda, so stay Gilis Ni Proise. この国に目をつけ始めた。僕には恐らく、いずれ西洋の国々の餌食となるだろう。それゆえに私は思うんだよ。本当にこのままでいいのだろうかね。ああ、すまない。It doesn't matter to me, Father. I just want to hear the sound of your voice. So, Kai. Ja, you are Mukashi Banashi de Mosteageo. As I strung together my past memories of father, the only ones coming to mind were scenes of his generosity and charisma. My eyes slowly drooped downwards and I shook my head as I muttered in a hushed tone. He truly loved me. Day in and day out, he would treat his patients, but somehow he always found time for me too. I remember when I prepared dinner for the first time. He ate the charred fish, licking his lips and insisting that he loved it even though it was terrible. Whenever I fell ill, he would keep a lantern by my bedside, staying up with me all night until I slept. I felt like I was excavating myself, sifting for clues in places where there weren't. I only saw his smile. Still, I needed to remind myself why I was here. If he truly wishes to change this country into one filled with furies, does that undo all the good he's ever done? <sighs> Was any of it real? Yamazaki took a small step closer to me. As I tremble with anxiety, he closed the distance between us. He didn't lift a finger. Instead, he whispered, bringing our two faces within inches of each other. Something was compelling me to grab onto him, but I feared acting too presumptuously. Took solace knowing that Yamazaki and I 
unequivocally agree upon one thing. Father had committed egregious sins that threatened our way of life and violated human order. I'm so sorry, Amazaki. Is it okay if we just stay like this for a little while? Yamazaki-san softly wrapped his arms around me. With a gentle finger, he pushed the tears off my cheek. As much as I hated to admit it, I was overwhelmed with emotion, crushed by a lifetime of meaningless memories that were wilting and fading with time. If only I could retreat into the comfort of Yamazaki-san's frail, loving embrace until the end of time.